Howdy, I'm Randy Selby. I own Randy's Custom Rifles. As a young lad here in the valley, I grew up on a tourist resort, hunting lodge. My grandparents owned it. And from a very early age, I had a great interest in those sort of things to do with the out of doors, horses, hunting, guns and so forth. My granddad was a gun collector and did gun work for himself and I very early was very attentive to that. Followed my granddad all around the area no matter what he was doing and people, friends that, that he knew, people that came hunting with him and one thing or another, I always had to be right in the middle of everything. So at a very early age, I say, I got involved, I started shooting a 22 rifle at six years old, and by the time I was nine years old, I had a larger caliber rifle to be able to hunt varmints with. And when I was about nine years old, my granddad had a couple of horses he wanted to sell, and we knew some people, my granddad knew some people from the valley, across the valley from us, and they also had an operation similar to ours. And this couple came over, it happened to be Les Bowman and his wife Marty. And Marty loved to raise horses. And one of the horses we had was a mare and she took to that mare very quickly. And all the time that, that they were there, they showed an interest in me and, and couldn't believe how interested I was in the horses and things like that. And we just kind of developed a relationship, I did, my granddad with, with Les and Marty Bowman. And it was within, within the year, Marty Bowman called and said that Colonel Townsend Whalen was gonna be at the ranch to hunt and that they wanted my granddad and me to come over and, and meet Colonel Townsend Whalen. Now I'm only nine years old and, but we went over and and had a great lunch at their hunting lodge and, you know, developed somewhat more of a relationship. And whenever I saw Les, we always spoke when we were in town. I see him frequently in town. We, both of our operations were around 40 miles from Cody, Wyoming, west of Cody, Wyoming, near Yellowstone Park. And by the time I was 14 years old, I was doing a lot of, a lot of shooting my granddad taught me how to reload ammunition by the time I was 10 years old. And so I was working up loads for, for various things at that age with other people. I took right to it and I had several rifles that I'd picked up when I was 15 years old. I was hand loading for him and I had a rifle of a, a friend of mine that I was working on trying to develop a load. and. I bumped into Les at the post office in Cody and I told him the problems that I was having with this rifle. And he says, well, you need to do this, you need to do that, something else, you know. And basically just right there, you know, headed me in the right direction to de be able to develop loads for this rifle. And it turned out it worked really, really well, his advice. And we developed a, a tremendous relationship over the years. And Within, within the year or so, I picked up the various component parts to build, to build a rifle myself because my granddad could show me how to do some of these things. And so I built, built my first rifle at 15 years old. And within a few months, I built a second rifle. And the first rifle, I developed loads for it and it shot quarter inch groups, 10 shot quarter inch group at 100 yards. My second rifle, I shot nine sixteen inch group. That was just right a couple years after the seven Remington Magnum came out. That that was Les Bowman's brainchild that he sold to Remington Arms, and because he was very close to those folks at Remington, he guided all the all the Remington top brass at his outfitting business in the South Fork of the Shoshone. They took these hunters back, you know, thirty some odd miles into the wilderness what country they called the thoroughfare. Anyway, uh, we were just constantly together and, and 
by the time I was about 19 years, years old, I got married and I was thinking of what I was going to do when I graduated from high school and, and less than an hour spending a lot of time shooting and developing loads for rifles, just all sorts of things because all the larger gun companies sent him their rifles to test because they, they knew that if they sent it to less, that he was the man, the go-to man to properly test the rifle and give a word of praise or or a word of criticism or whatever it might happen to be. And anyway, Les was kind of inquisitive. You know, he says, what are you gonna do? He says, when you get out of high school, he says, you gotta, you know, he says, you, you got a wife and he says, you're gonna, you know, probably sometime have a child and you know, what are you gonna do? I said, well, I'm kind of leaning towards maybe, you know, being, being an engineer. Well, Les was a very experienced engineer and he built and developed aircraft engines and so forth. And he also being connected to all the gun people in the gun world, clear across the United States and other parts of the world. He knew, he knew those aspects. He knew everybody in the industry personally up close. He could just pick up a telephone and, and get whatever he needed for whatever the purpose might happen to be. And he says, well, he says, uh, you know, he says, of course, he says, you know, he says, I'm an engineer. And he said, I think that you'd find engineering boring. And he says, I don't think that that's what you want to do. And he says, uh, you've got an inherent built-in gun ability, a gun savvy like nobody else of your age. So he says, uh, I think that you ought to go to gun making school. I suggest Trinidad State Junior College. P.O. Ackley started, started that school. And basically it was worked into the college over the years. And he says, I, I suggest that that's what you, you need to do. And, you know, and just at that, I thought, you know, I think you're right. I think you're right. I think that fits, that fits Randy because you know, I love to shoot, I love to develop loads and do all these things and hunt. And what could be better than to build rifles and shoot the rifles, test the rifles that you built and sell them to, to, to people and so forth. And, you know, develop that kind of relationship with people that did like things in the gun world. So he, he wrote a letter of recommendation to to Trinidad State Junior College. And I don't know that he needed to. I mean, anybody could apply and go to go to college, you know, for whatever the purpose was, but he did. And anyway, and they sent him an application package and everything. And I applied and went to, to Trinidad State Junior College in 1969, September 69. That's a two year accredited college course with a major in, you know, in gunsmithing. So you go to guns, gunsmithing school, there's various things that you have to do. And one of the biggest requirements during that length of time where you're there, you've got to build a complete rifle, you know, take an action and, and a barrel, a barrel blank and a stock blank, just a square stock blank and build a rifle you know, with those component parts, a trigger, you know, scope mounts and, and so forth, and whatever else, ever else that might happen involved. So that's what I did. I had a, I had a Springfield action, and I, I built a 30-06 rifle on a Springfield action, and I was finished weeks, weeks ahead of all the other students because I'd already built, you know, three rifles that way, you know. I didn't have a lathe or aspect, uh, you know, access to a lathe before I went to gunsmithing school. But I learned, you know, some of those aspects. And I'd used a lathe a lot in high school because I, I took double courses in, in machine shop. So I had a tremendous amount of experience in the machine shop running lathes and milling machines and, and things of this sort. So I think that I had kind of a head start ahead of some of these other students because of my background, you know, with my granddad and and with Les Bowman. So 
we had to make various tools and fixtures and jigs for gunsmithing in, in gunsmithing school. We had to take apart, disassemble and reassemble firearms and so forth. And when I went to Trinidad, I took 50 guns to gunsmithing school. And 50 guns, you know, about a dozen of those were rifles, the rest were, were handguns. And I took all these guns because I, I felt that I had a lot of, a lot of guns uh, that were very valuable from the aspect of, of gunsmithing theory, that's assembly and disassembly. And so a lot of these firearms I took to, to Trinidad were used in gunsmithing class to, to be able to teach us, teach all the students how to assemble and disassemble firearms and, and how this worked and how that worked. A lot of them were semi-automatic handguns because my granddad was into that sort of thing and I, at, at that point in time, I had inherited a huge gun collection. With that, with that aspect, it, it, really, it really benefited me because they had a limited number of firearms at, at Trinidad State Junior College for gunsmithing theory and to be able to teach students how to, how to work on firearms and how things really worked and so forth. And it really added a huge dimension to, to every aspect and it was very much appreciated. And as I say, we were all required to build a, a complete rifle during that class of, you know, gunsmithing classes of, of two years, but I didn't build one rifle. I built 18 rifles in 18 months while I was going. The only student that had ever done that I don't know whether anybody has since, but I built a rifle a month while I was there because I needed some kind of an income. And I had a wife, by this time a young daughter, and had to support myself and my wife and my, and my daughter. And my wife worked and while I was going to, going to school, but I was working all the time. You know, I, I put in average of around 16 hours every day in, in gun, gunsmithing school and building guns, and I actually took orders. People that would come to the college and want a gun built, and I took a, take order to build a rifle for these folks. And I didn't make a lot doing it, but I made enough to supplement our income. We could barely get by, you know, on that sort of an income. So that benefited me greatly because of building 18 rifles in 18 months while I was going to going to gunsmithing school, and. By the time I, you know, saw the end of the road to get out of gunsmithing school in 1971, thinking, well, who am I going to go to work for? What am I going to do? I've got to start my own shop. What am I going to do, you know? Well, I sent letters around various parts of the country. P.O. Ackley, you know, who was over in, in Salt Lake City, was a guns, gunsmith in Salt Lake City. And anyway, other people that, you know, like barrel makers and other gunsmiths. And really those were all pretty much just one man shops actually. And it was rare that they took on anybody to work in their shop, occasionally they did. So I had to work into something and, and since I had quite a lot of machine experience, you know, lays and milling machines and so forth, I, I landed a job, you know, as a, as a machinist. And over the years, I worked into being a tool and die maker machinist. I found a, an opportunity that maybe I needed to kind of move up in what I was doing, and I wanted to do something in the machine aspect of things related to the gun world. So I flew to Lewiston, Idaho, and I went to Spear Rifle Bullet Company. And I told them who I was and what I did, and they hired me on the spot. They wanted me to go to work the next day, and I said, well, I can't do that. I've got a wife and a child, and, you know, my home is over in, in Colorado, and I've got to move to Idaho, and so give me a month, you know, to get things over here and get settled, and, you know, so that's what I did. So I was a machinist, tool and dime maker, journeyman machinist, tool and dime maker for Spear Rifle Bullet Company for a little over a year and a half, and also during that time, because they knew and understood that I did a lot of this gun work. They had many accuracy rifles in, the, in their test lab that the barrels were wore out on. 
So I rebarreled all the rifles in the in the ballistics lab for them. They had barrels that were wore out on the pressure test guns. I rebarreled those pressure test actions and built a you know copper crusher pressure test action for for spear just like several that they already had they needed another one so I did that I built bullet making machines bullet dies I perfected the they were wanting to come out with a line of their own boat tail bullets I perfected the boat tail bullet machining aspect and so forth nobody else could seem they'd, they'd handed this job to other other employees but they could never seem to catch on how to do it and I I took right to it and did it and perfected it so we were able to produce bullets for, you know, with, with the boat tail design from Spear. And I built the Grand Slam, Grand Slam bullet making machine that built their Grand Slam bullets. And from the ground floor up, it was built out of an old World War II 50 BMG. You know, it was basically a machine to draw copper, I mean, a bra brass, brass material into 50 BMG cartridge cases. And of course we had to tear all that down and rebuild this machine completely because it was aged. And I built all those, built all those things. I built their whole line of, of ammunition, uh, pistol ammunition, loading machines well there. And during this length of time, I, I worked four 10 hour days and it just literally wore me out and I couldn't understand how you know, I have three days off. By the time I go back to work, I was recuperated. But, you know, after a day or two, then I was wore out again. And so I found out that I, I needed to leave that low climate that was at about 1,100 feet. Because I, I'd, I'd spent, you know, my life at higher five, six, seven, eight, nine thousand 9,000 feet altitude. So I, I got a hold of Burris scope company in Greeley, Colorado because they needed a tool and die maker machinist and I, I landed the job over the phone and I left Idaho and went to work for Don Burris. I built everything in the spear in the I mean in the in the Burris uh, rifle scope uh, company that built rifle scopes I built everything all the tools and fixtures twice for the company I, I built all the all the prototype scopes other than the four of their first original scopes that they built. I built everything for the entire full field line of scopes and their mini scopes during the, the years that oh just over two and a half years that I worked there. And I found that, you know, I wanted to get back to kind of where my roots were. And you know, all all this time that, you know, I was working for for Burris or working for Spear, I was building rifles part time on my own for, for people all around the country. And I knew that that's, you know, really what I wanted to do, that I, I, I felt better working for myself than I did for somebody else. And so I, I eventually left Burris, you know, reluctantly left Burris Rifle Scope Company because it was a good job. They were good people, and I came back to, to Cody, Wyoming, you know, the area where I was born and raised, and opened a gun shop, and my wife and I bought a dry cleaning business to also, for, for her, something to do also, and because I felt it was going to take time to build that gun gun shop up, and so here we are now from, from 1965 when I built my first rifles, and here it is, you know, 2017. So I've been building rifles for 52 years and over this 52 years I've built rifles for for people in every state in the United States, Alaska, Hawaii, uh, Australia, New Zealand, Germany and so forth and this is what I what I want to do. We live out in the we live about 20 miles out in the country I've got my own my own gun shop and, and I'm able to, to do all my gun testing right on site. I can reload ammunition for a particular gun project and test it and develop loads for the precision rifles that I build. And I build rifles for almost every aspect 
that a person has a need for, from bench rest rifles, hunting rifles, lightweight hunting rifles, long range shooting rifles, and so forth, and take down rifles. And anyway, uh, you know, it's something that I enjoy, and I don't, I don't see myself as ever, you know, giving up what I like to do. I'll do it, you know, as long as I can do it and continue to do it. And I feel that I have such an extra edge on, on some things to do with firearms and building guns because of people that I was associated with because of family, because of people that I work for, you know, working for, for uh, Spear Rifle Bullet Company and for, and for Burris the design of rifle scopes. I understand the design of rifle scopes in and out because I built everything that built rifle scopes and worked hand in hand with Don Burris who was who was a, who was a genius and an absolute expert in, in rifle scopes and of course Spear Rifle Bullet Company has been around for 70 some years and started by Vernon Spear. I was lucky to have I met Vernon Spear a few months before he passed away. I met his, his son also and worked, worked with all those people. But anyway, uh, that's, that's been, been my background, what I do and, and why I do it, the love that I have for the firearms and, and the hunting industry and the relationships that I built with, with people all across the world and, and in this country and I don't know how you could start over and replace that.